Hello everyone, welcome to Fiora. Welcome to uh, the insanity that is going to take place here. Now first we have a warm-up match brought to us by a relatively new subscriber, Babseat, who is, I believe, in Watt University. Yes, he's in Watt University for the North American server. And he is in a stock IS-8. Well, it's not really stock. It does have the MT-25 gun from the STI and the IS-4. But the turret stock, which for those who don't know, an APCR round will punch the stock turret of an IS-8 from an equal to your heavy quite easily. And he is cruising up to look for something to blast on airfield. Now this now if you want to skip to the main feature, there's your annotation. Click the button. You can go look at the T28 concept and all its prettiness. I'm also going to be resuming two videos a day. And tomorrow we are going to be resuming Alien Isolation, as well as another game that my girlfriend has convinced me to play. You guys seem to really love it when she convinces me to play games because it involves me screaming my head off and cowering in a corner. And she's giggling over there as silently as possible. In the meantime, ooh, AMX30, how are you today? Yeah, that rock, don't use it. Seriously, guys, you can get some damage from it, but unless the people over here are actively engaged, which basically means you're relying on your team to do something, you're going to end up shot up. And this T-54 is brave as hell. Oof, and Babsy just eats a bunch of shells. Like, right in the, uh... Wow. Right through the upper armor, it seems. Or his side. Either way, it hurts. Half his hit points are gone. And I don't think he's even issued his hit points and damage yet. This is not a good situation, if you can't tell. Now I'm wondering, do you guys like like the transitions that go by when I stop it and restart and all those stuff, or do you guys prefer this method here that's just going to be straight through, play everything, and there's not going to be any need for transitions in between? But there's going to be a little bit of filler, because obviously, you know, it takes a second to reload up the game between replays. Oh, Bulldog, you who do not want to poke out in front of a T-30 and an IS-8, you will literally disintegrate. He's poking around, he's trying to figure out where to, what to do here because they're basically outnumbered and heavily outgunned. And this Super Pershing is pushing up into them and getting wasted, really. Ooh! E75 gun hurt. 128mm will do that to you repeatedly. Nice snapshot! I'm not quite sure how you managed to hit that, but keep it up. That is the one advantage to the IS-8 over the E-25, you will reload first. But again, he's now reduced to a one-shot for most things on this battlefield that are going to shoot at him. Not much you can do about it. And, oof. Well, that was a bounce. It's got to be a low caliber gun for that rate of fire. He fires a blind shot thinking that someone's there. I guess we'll find out at the end of the match if someone was. And... Hmm... He's really having to look here for something to shoot at. I mean, they can't push. They're they're still outgunned. He's got the AMX-30 tracked. If somebody else will put a round into him, the AMX-30 will bite the dust. Ah, IS-3, your BL-9 gun is too inaccurate for this. That was a mistake, AMX-30. That was not worth your life. Tier 7 heavy, or pull back and wait until I'm not spotted to come out and kill it. Bunch of one-shot tanks on both sides, and ooh, 
Was that... That was an IS-3? Really? Thought an arty shell had come in. Babseed, however, recognizes what's going on with this mini-map here, as I enlarge it for you guys, in that he needs to RTB it. As quickly as possible. Because the enemy light tanks and the remaining heavies have stormed to the beach. Somehow. I gotta give credit to the lights and the tiger. I mean, I really didn't expect those guys to be able to pull that off. Ooh. Bulldog. Ow. That hurt to watch. Let's just put 152 millimeter BL-10 love into the bulldog. I really don't want that if I'm a bulldog player. The term overkill comes to mind. Ooh, wow. Hi, Tiger. You killed a tier 9. So the Tiger's proven himself to be lethal, as has the folk. And they are now playing Seek and Destroy with light tanks. Oh, T-37 does not see him in time, or ignores him. Either way, the T-37's repair kit is now used. As we see Babseed advancing in. Closing with his enemy. The T-37 obviously is running. I mean, I would run. There's an IS-8 bearing down on me. I have no chance to outflank it because there's another light tank right there. I'd run. And he's halfway across the map already. This is something you should not do in a heavy tank. Don't chase the rabbit. The rabbit will usually get away. It does, however, put Babseed in a position to shoot at the Tiger 1. Which, to his credit, is a good idea. He is, however, very vulnerable to arty, sniper fire, and speak of the devil, there's an arty shell. And he is a one-shot for that folk. Because 155 millimeter is not something... Well, it has a 120, excuse me. 120 millimeter is not something you want to just folk with. My puns are terrible. You knew this coming in here. Otherwise, why would you watch? Uh, I also really have to wonder why all the Russian tanks have wood. You know, the logs on the side. Apparently their solution for fixing the track... Ours was a, this really complicated jack and... And, and pulley system. There's wood. Just give the tank wood. I'll be here all week. <laughs> the folk comes up full health. And Bad Seed is quickly running out of friends. But now the folk is taking a significant amount of damage. And I'm is turning around to shoot at the arty, ignoring the one shot IS 8 who's going to plug his rear repeatedly. You have four kills, folk! It's not worth it! Why are you going after the artillery? However, Babseed is now out of friends. It's 4v1. If he hadn't missed that shot, it would be 3v1 and he would be the high tier tank. But instead, it's 4v1. He's a one shot for the folk. A three shot for the FV and a two shot for the Tiger, as well as a one shot for the Artie. Yeah, this is not the situation you want to be in ever. The folk obviously has gone, nope, folk this, I'm gone, run away. I'll go reposition. I'll lure the IS 8 out into a uh, much more open area where I can take advantage of its superior view range and camouflage rating. The FV, however, has just driven up and gone, Oh, IS-8, I got this! Dirt, 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 dirt. Don't be this guy. Babseed worries about what's behind him. Because something's on his cap. Sacrifices half his hip... Uh, don't do that. When you're low health and you have more than one enemy to fight, do not ram. Oh, folk, you timed that wrong. Now the FV must take on an IS-8. That's not really going to happen. 
I can't believe you did that, folk. You could have come out the other side and been behind him. You could have come up and analyzed the situation, but nope, you ran right out in front of his gun. Sometimes you just get lucky. And in this case, I'll give it to you. Babsy, you got lucky. Your opponents were pretty dumb. I don't know. I mean, the folk got five kills, but he made so many mistakes. He chased the arty. He should have turned around and killed Babseed and then worried about the artillery. He he drove out in front of Babseed's gun. He sat there and let Babseed put three rounds into his rear. I don't know what else to say about that. Babseed knows that Artie can smash him. I would have avoided knocking that over because that might have alerted Artie to his position. And the tiger could one-shot him. Could. It's probably going to take two. Uh, when you know you're a one-shot and you're by yourself and you know Artie's looking for you, don't knock stuff over, guys. It kind of tells the Artie where you are and the Artie might tell you his friends where you are. The other interesting news is perhaps he's actually done a significant amount of damage he's also running out of ammunition I say it doesn't carry many rounds and he decides I'm gonna hunt I'm not gonna sit here and wait for my doom I'm gonna go hunt that tiger and there it is in a weird position locks target and executed now all he has to do is stay already safe and drive to their cap circle that's all he has to do. Game's not over yet, Babs. You still got an arty to contend with. I'm going to speed this one up so we can get into the concept because it's going to be him hunting the arty for a little bit. I will admit he did do smart. He came out of an unpredictable direction in order to come come around on the tiger. Nobody would have expected you to go all the way across the cap circle and come all the way back in. Especially when your last known position was the cap circle. He drives into the enemy cap. He needs to avoid knocking anything over or they the arty will shoot near him. And once the arty hits him once, the arty's going to have a pretty good idea of where he is and where he can move to. So he's hoping to cap this one out. And he's looking to see if the Artie's going to come up on him or take a guess shot or what. I'm kind of mystified the Artie doesn't fire at him. If I was that Artie, I would be plunging guess shots on every piece of open ground I could see. But, doesn't happen. Artie instead drives into the cap circle. Right at the end. Gets spotted first and dies. Artie players, pay attention. You don't want to do that. You want to, if it's one tank capping, you've got plenty of time to rein in several shells. And have several chances to find the tank. And most players don't know to move on top of your previously shot position in order to hit you. But the ISA is not what you guys came here to see. You guys came here to see the concept. The tank that I kind of just ignored ever getting and then went, you know what, I'm going to sit down and finish this because I need the credits from the new missions from the 55A, which by the way has scored me a T62A. So, here we have the T-28 concept. Now, I'm going to give you some advice about this tank. You see these two things on the side? These two big bulbous things? That's the weak point! However, for the driver of the T-28 concept, it's pretty easy to cover those weak points up. Because what you do is you drive the tank like so, with the gun pointing like this, and a rock right here. So now this weak point is shielded by your tank, and this one's shielded by a rock. You guys are going to see me use this technique to maximum effectiveness. As I drive this slow, lumbering monstrosity up a hill. 
Now the disadvantage to the concept is it's not a preferred tier tank, just like the Stug, it's not preferred, so guess what? You're expected to fight tier 9s with this thing, which can actually punch its front armor pretty easily with this massive flat frontal plate. Now tier 7 can't do that, and I know it. So at top tier, you're a beast, at tier 9, you're mediocre, but you're not bad. You do still have a 105 gun. As you guys can see, the armor just bouncing those shells. And I'm actually going to look at this from third person. And you're going to see shell after shell just ricocheting off the armor. Every caliber of gun on this battlefield. 105, 122, there's even a 130 back there with the SU-100Y wailing away on me as I focus on this KV-3. There's a Churchill hitting me. There's an FV. Look at this. This thing's just like, lol, I don't care. All because that left weak point is covered by a rock, and the right weak point is covered by my tank. This is a perfect position for this tank. The Churchill keeps tracking me. I can't quite get a clear line on that 5916. But anything that, that they're just shooting me, and I don't care. My viewports will spot most anything that shoots at me within view range. And I move up, and I plant one into the IS, and I'm trying to still keep that weak point covered up. Another round, just, and I'm tracked now by the 5916. Now that actually penetrated. As did that, they have figured out the weak point is right there where that round just impacted. The other round, let me play forward just a little bit so we get rid of the brightness. So there's one penetration right there in that crevice on the side turret. The other penetration, let me see if I can find it. No, I can't actually find it. And according to this, my track is blown, but I don't really see where it's blown. And you guys can see the rounds just raining in on me, and I don't care. Shoot me all you like. It's probably not going to hurt. That was actually the SU 100 y that penetrated me, by the way. Not quite sure where he hit, but at this point, don't really care. I back up just in time to prevent the IS from being able to shoot that side turret and then pull forward and I'm like goodbye IS have a nice life I have just bounced shell after shell off of this tank my gun is broken by the way I forgot to give it consumables or to hit the auto resupply and repair button so I'm doing this without consumables just that Three solid minutes of just bouncing enemy fire from a half dozen tanks. Here's the best part. With a damaged gun. Enemy armor is she shoots, she scores. <laughs> all the armor. I have all the armor. So, is this tank worth all the missions and pain and heartache? Yeah, if, it, it's the only American TD available to us to train crews with. The problem I have with that, of course, is the fact that it's uh, not preferred tier, and that can get kind of dicey. So, let's take a look at the stats of the IS-8 first. Ha, gotcha, you thought you were going to see the concept first. And here we have, um, apparently he did not, he did not hit whatever was back there shooting. But Babsy did an excellent job using his armor and 5,300 damage. Good game. 19 shots fired, 16 hits, 14 pins. So he knew where to shoot stuff. Just about every time he fired, he did actually penetrate if he hit. But about a fourth of his rounds were useless. Fair enough. It happens. Happens to all of us. One hit short of getting a steel wall, but walks home with 40,000 credits and just over 2,000 XP in a 14-minute battle. Let's go look. He also traveled, like, all over the map. 
Just so you know, he traveled everywhere. Now the concept. First time out of the garage, mastery badge. Cool headed with high caliber guns shooting at it. Just going, nope, nope, nope. Steel wall and high caliber. 3,063 damage issued with three kills. Not a bad tank. I mean, it, it really does feel armored and like it can fight a front line battle. 4,500 damage. Bounced. It is Now, here is the thing I have discovered. With these premium tanks that we can earn, they do not earn premium credits. They only earn a 50% XP bonus. What the hell, Wargaming? What the hell? We do all this work for these tanks, and then they don't give us a credit bonus. Not happy. 25 shots received, 3 penetrated, 20 of them bounced. Walks, walk home with about 4,000, yeah, 4,007 XP going into the crew. Very, it's a solid tank. It's a solid tank. Um, but why doesn't it earn premium credits, Wargaming? And I've looked at this, the 55A, excuse me, the 260 and the Stug 4 all don't earn premium credits. They just give 50% crew XP and 50% bonus to uh, overall XP earned. And it's frustrating. These really need to be upgraded to full premium tanks. Also the gun. It's the first time I've ever had a really accurate American gun. The long range or the short range shots doesn't matter. It goes where it's pointed. I'm just shocked that America... In, in World of Tanks made a gun that shoots straight. But this was also a relatively quick match. Four minutes. In the meantime, I hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope you guys have liked the uh, the, the sheer carnage and the sparks flying off the concept. As well as the uh, the shenanigans of one of the viewers, of one of the newer viewers, Babseed and his uh, ISA. But this is Fiora officially signing out for right now. And I will see you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye. Thank y'all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, why not click the like button? It would really help the channel and let me know that you're enjoying my content. Want to see more content? There's a subscribe icon right there so you know when I put up videos. I would appreciate it also if you helped grow this channel's community. So share this with your friends or just put it up on Facebook. Want to help Fiora out directly? There are three ways you can do this. One is the patronage page, which all the investment towards I put right back into the channel through contests and paying for things like video editing software. Then there are two ways to support the channel directly. One is click the ads that YouTube shows you. This is how YouTube pays its content creators, by your clicks on those advertisements. The other and last way to support the channel is through fan funding that is now available through Fiora's channel page. If you happen to have an extra dollar or two, it would really let Fiora know that her videos mean something to you. Anyway, please check out these other videos here on the end page collage. And as always, I will see you on the battlefield or in the next video. Till then, this is Fiora signing out.